Fedora 31 is finally here. After a little bit of a delay, you can now download Fedora Workstation 31, which is going to be the topic of this video. We're going to give it a review. It was released recently and I was very eager to test this one out. Even though Fedora is not my distribution of choice nowadays, I do have a lot of respect for this project. And I also make it a point to test out each and every release when they put one out, even though I don't always do a review, but I definitely wanted to do a review of Fedora 31. With this new release of this popular distribution, we get kernel 5.3.7 and GNOME 3.34.1 out of the box which is definitely a great start because it's a great kernel. And also we get massive speed improvements in GNOME 3.34, which I'm sure is a benefit to everyone, regardless of whether you're using Fedora or not. It's definitely great to have the latest GNOME release. And since we get that here, we can also benefit from the work the GNOME developers have put in to make that a faster, more responsive experience for their users. Now, on my end, Fedora is a distribution that's somewhat challenging to review. It has a very good dedicated following, even though it's not as popular as say Debian, Ubuntu, or Linux Mint. There's a lot of people out there who love this distribution and enjoy using it for their day-to-day -day work. It is stable, so I have never seen any crashes in any recent release of Fedora that I've checked out, so it is a stable experience. But then the question that I always ask myself is, you know, who exactly is this distribution for? Now, obviously, when you go to download Fedora for your desktop, you're going to download Fedora Workstation. The term Workstation already gives us some clue. That implies maybe a power user, a developer, an engineer, or somebody that wants to use their computer to get their work done. But I still find that I need to ask that question. Who is this for? What type of user is Fedora actually for? And that is going to be the main topic of this review because I wanted to approach this from a slightly different angle to basically see where Fedora fits when it comes to the ecosystem of all the other distributions out there and see if this is something that I can recommend an average user, you know, a professional user, just where exactly does this fit in? So let's go ahead and dive into Fedora 31 and see if we can answer that question. So first things first, here we are at the default desktop. I went ahead and installed this fresh so you guys could see basically what it looks like out of the box. I've already gone through the installation process. So if you're curious what that looks like, go ahead and check out that video where I go through the installation routine for Fedora 31. It hasn't changed much. So if you have installed Fedora in the past, I guess you've probably already seen it because they're using the same installer this time around. Just real quick, the installation process is really easy. I found that it installs very quickly. I would still prefer they made it easier or more user friendly to wipe the disk. They still have this reclaim space thing that I don't really understand. Um, you know, it, it's just expected in pretty much every installer to have a wipe disk option. So the way that they go about having you wipe your disk to install Fedora Fresh is a little clumsy to me. But that's a very minor complaint because again, the installation process is fairly easy other than that. It happens really quickly and you know its only job is to get Fedora installed on your computer and it definitely was able to achieve that. Now it's worth a quick mention that I am using a pretty old computer. If you haven't been following my channel then you know you don't already know this but this is a three-ish year old System76 Lemur laptop. I have several laptops I have some that are bleeding edge, you know, that are more current, maybe the previous generation, but still pretty decent. And then I have this one, which is really old. And I like to try distributions out on this machine because I feel like if it runs fast on this older piece of hardware, chances are it's going to run fast, especially fast on newer hardware as well. Now, to be fair, this is an i7 with an SSD and 16 gigs of RAM. So this machine is no slouch, but the processor, you know, it's, it's over three years old. And while it's still solid, you know, if you're going to see any problems with slowdown, it's definitely going to show itself on this laptop. So I figured it would be a good starting point. 
And that's something that I'm going to talk about in this review is the performance and how I feel like the performance is on this older piece of hardware. But first, we have this getting started screen that is staring us right in the face. So we may as well take a look at that. This is actually from GNOME. It gives us some videos that shows us basically how to use the GNOME shell interface. So if you've never used GNOME before, well, here you go. You can watch these videos. And you know, we have our typical bluish fedora wallpaper. I really like this one. Now when it comes to themes, they don't really theme anything. That could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you look at it and what your opinion is. So if I open up files, for example, we can see that we have the standard GNOME theme right here, which has actually been updated a few times now. It definitely looks, you know, in my opinion, more professional than it has before. But this isn't the work of Fedora. They basically leave the defaults when they theme this distribution. In fact, they really don't theme this much. They include a new wallpaper. They put their logo on the login screen. And then, of course, they do theme the boot screen when you boot into this installation. So that way you do see some branding, but they don't overdo it. Now, in my opinion, you know, the downside about this is that while the GNOME default theme is good, it's not great. I mean, let's face it, Pop! OS these days, they have the best, in my opinion, GNOME shell theme in the industry. But you could also go to gnomelook.org and you could download a theme on this distro or any other if you want to spice it up a bit. So I do think that this is great for those of you that prefer the GNOME experience. Maybe you want to put your own theme on here and you don't want too much branding. I get it. That's actually a perfectly valid use case. In my case, I probably would have liked to see more theming because, I mean, let's face it, the GNOME shell theme can be a little off-putting to some that uh, don't feel like it's as good as other environments. But personally, I like it, so I'm not going to knock it for this. I think that it is pretty solid. Now, the theme, or lack thereof, is not the first thing I actually noticed about this release. No, it's actually the performance. This distro is fast. And it's not Fedora's doing, although who knows, maybe they did have something to do with that and their developers helped work on this. But we have GNOME 3.34, and it seems like they always brag about every version of this desktop environment being faster than others. And I've noticed some slight speed improvements throughout the years, but this is the first time that I really feel like, oh my God, this is faster. So again, this is a three-year-old computer. So you just saw me launch files. So it happened pretty quickly. Everything responded very fast for me. And if I open up some other applications, so there's the default browser, there's Firefox, which is kind of making a liar out of me. That was a little slower than normal. But you know, that's gonna be Firefox's problem, not a GNOME issue. But sticking to GNOME apps, like I just bring up software, it was pretty much instantaneous. And it already has some cataloging done here. We'll go over that in just a moment. But you can see that even when I start typing, it, start, it shows the results here pretty quickly. I clicked on LibreOffice and you know that launched pretty quickly as well. Now to be fair, a good majority of the reason why this is fast is because I'm running on an SSD. Now what I've noticed is that applications launch fast. For example, LibreOffice, Firefox, they were launched you know, pretty decently, but the GNOME interface itself and the GNOME applications all launch lightning quick. And when you're going from window to window, minimizing, maximizing, the overall environment is very responsive, giving you the impression that you know, you're running a faster desktop environment, and technically you are. While some applications will be faster launched than others, GNOME Shell is definitely faster in this release, and you can definitely feel that difference. Since I have these applications up on my screen already, we may as well go over these. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. But um, right here we have LibreOffice Writer, and the version that we have installed by default is 6.3.2, which I do believe is the latest release. If not, it's pretty darn close. And that's great because, you know, I've written four books now, and I've done that with LibreOffice each time. So, you know, LibreOffice is definitely a capable 
word processor and if I was able to release and get published four books through this piece of software, we know it definitely is good. Despite what some naysayers out there might think, they say it's not as good as Microsoft Office, which is completely bogus. It's definitely as good as Microsoft Office. I think it's better and I was able to get my work done in it so you can't ask for more than that. So I'm definitely happy to see this included by default. We'll get back to the video in just a moment but I wanted to take a minute to mention my sponsor and cloud infrastructure provider, Linode. Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable to host your own app, site, or project in the cloud. Whether you're a Linux power user or just a beginner, you can use Linode. You can start from scratch and fully customize your server for any application or use Linode's one-click apps to deploy game servers, WordPress sites, personal VPNs, and much more. You can even upload and run your own image. Linode comes with amazing 100% human, 24 by seven customer support by phone or support ticket, along with hundreds of docs and guides to help you get started. Sign up to get $20 free on your new Linode account with the code LearnLinux19 or by signing up with the link in the description. I really appreciate Linode's sponsorship of my channel. They're awesome. Definitely check them out. Now, let's get back to the video. Now, of course, we have Firefox as the default browser. Now, I'm pretty sure this is going to be behind because I did freshly install Fedora for this review, and it is behind, but that's to be expected because, you know, Firefox, it updates seemingly every other week. I know that's not true, but uh, you know, it does update frequently. We're up to version 70, which we'll get that as soon as we install our updates, which I will do shortly. But, you know, if you've used Firefox before, you know, there's nothing else to say about it. It's definitely a capable browser. It's my default browser. So, um, of course, I'm biased here, but I am happy to see that included. But we can also install other browsers if this is not something that we want to use. And here we have GNOME software. So I'll go ahead and close this right here. And you know, there's really not much to say about GNOME software that I haven't already said in other reviews. It gets the job done. It's not the most amazing app store type application in the world, but again, you know, it does the job. So if there's something that you want to install, so for example, I'm a Thunderbird user, then you just simply click on that and then click install, it couldn't be easier. And there you go. We now have Thunderbird. So if I click on launch, it'll come up. But I'm not going to go through and set up my email account. You basically just saw me install an application, which couldn't be easier. We also have categories here as well. So if I click on games, what do we have? So we have quite a few open source games. We have Frozen Bubble, which, you know, I, I think every installation of Linux should have. Frozen Bubble is a great game. We also have Chromium. Not the browser, I'm talking about the spaceship shooter. This game is awesome as well. But you get the idea. You could basically just go through the different categories and you get some options there. We have some what they call editor's picks and we have recent releases. So we can see definitely some additional applications here that we can install on our desktop. We also get the option to enable third-party repositories here, which will give us additional software choices. I'm going to go ahead and enable that. And that should give us the option now to install something like, say, Chrome. So I'm going to go ahead and start searching for Google Chrome. And as you can see, here it is. So I'm going to go ahead and install it. And it's asking me to enable and install, which is strange because I already clicked on enable. Same problem in the last release. I guess it's not a big deal to have to do that twice. So I'll just go ahead and click on it. See if we can get this installed. So now Google Chrome is installed and I can simply click here to launch it. And you can see this works just fine. Now, in the previous release, I had some issues with this. Uh, when it first came out in Fedora 30, you know, this actually didn't work at first. I don't quite remember why, but you know, out of the box, I could tell you right now that this experience 
does seem better and, the, and basically it works. I guess I couldn't ask for more than that. Despite the fact I have to click enable twice, I mean, that's a petty complaint. I was able to install Google Chrome. So for those of you that prefer free and open source software and you don't want those proprietary things on your system, then you simply won't enable that repository. But it makes it easy for those of you that do want to install things like Google Chrome. You simply enable that repository and then you can use GNOME software to get that installed. Then also in GNOME software here, we can install our updates. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And we have quite a few. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to set up a fresh install to record this review from so that you guys can see that process. So we can see here that we're gonna go from Firefox 69 to 70, which is the latest version. We have boxes installed by default and we're going to go ahead and update to that. And then of course they include most of the libraries and things like that, OS updates in one category right there. So let's go ahead and get these installed and uh, make sure that we're on the latest software. And then we get an option to restart and update. So I'll go ahead and click on that. The process of installing updates looks very professional and modern. When you choose to restart and update, it basically boots into its own little environment. It installs the updates and then it reboots your machine into the latest software stack. So it looks great and it gets the job done. Now it did actually freeze on reboot when I did the updates. As you can see here, package kit, Decided it didn't want to stop basically, so it kind of hung up the process a little bit. But other than that, the updates did finish successfully. And here we are. We are back at the Fedora desktop and all of our updates have been installed. So in terms of improvements, most of the improvements that you're going to find in this release in terms of new features are provided by the GNOME desktop itself. For example, if you go up here to activities and then you go to show applications, you can basically create what are like folders. So if I go to all, which will show all of the applications installed, I could do something like this. I could drag this LibreOffice icon on top of this one. And we see a new category was created here that says office. So let's just go ahead and drag all of those in there. So you can see we can actually do some customization of the application menu, which is really cool. But other than that, you know, you get all the improvements of GNOME, which are basically mostly going to be performance updates in this version. There are some smaller changes here and there, but you know, overall, it's a very good desktop and I'm happy to see that in Fedora 31. So overall, I think that this is a solid desktop. It's stable, it runs fast, it gives you a pretty decent working environment, but the question still remains, you know, who exactly is this for? Now, I suppose an easy answer to that question would be, it's for the workstation slash engineer slash developer user, as you can see by the fact that boxes is included by default, which is actually pretty cool because you are able to easily create virtual machines with this utility. So if you wanted to test out software on a specific distribution, you can do that with boxes, which is set up by default. You don't have to go through the trouble of setting that up yourself, which is awesome. Now this is a tool that an engineer or a developer would probably use to test their software out. So we can already see that this is mostly going to be for the professional type Linux user, maybe not so much the beginner or the average Linux user. This is basically for those of you that use Linux at work. And I think that statement is fair at this point that this is for the professional Linux user. And you know, that's not a surprise. You could go to the Fedora website and learn that yourself. That's not new. I'm gonna get into why this matters in a moment, but we are sensing a theme here and there is another tool that we might want to check into. So one thing that we can benefit from, of course, is Silverblue, which is a platform for testing out software. So it's not enough that we have boxes here as well. We also have Silverblue that we can use to also test things out with. My understanding is that Silverblue is specifically more toward the testing of container-based development than um, 
boxes here, which would actually be, you know, a complete operating system running in a virtual machine. But that's cool because you get the best of both worlds. And in Fedora 31, we have Toolbox available, which is a tool that we can use to greater simplify the process of bringing such a container online to perform our tests. Now, I'm not going to go too into detail about this, but I will show you real quick. So I'll just go ahead and bring up a terminal. Maximize that. And let's check it out. So to install Toolbox, we just run this command right here, sudo dnf install toolbox, and press enter. Put in my super secret password. Go ahead and confirm that. And we do have that installed. That was actually pretty quick. Now that we have that utility installed, we can do toolbox create to create our first toolbox. And it's going to go ahead and download what it needs. I'll just confirm it and allow it to do that. And just as it says right here, we can enter into the toolbox by simply typing this command. So let's go ahead and do that. And now we are in a toolbox. We're basically in a container. And it's pretty cool. We actually have this icon right here on the prompt, which basically is our confirmation that we're not actually running on the normal shell of our distribution. We are in a different environment. For example, I could just install something simple just to show that this works. So I could do sudo dnf install htop. and it's installed. So I can simply run it with htop and again I'm running inside this container and we have htop running here and you know this is installed in the container and just to show you I'm going to go ahead and open a new window here. And now we are on the local shell and let's try to run htop. Command not found. That's because we installed it inside this container which allows us to test out software before we either install it on our server or even our own local workstation. We can simply use this as a way of testing something to decide if a piece of software is actually a good fit for what we're working on. And these environments are completely disposable. So for example, I can just type exit. I could even just, just do uh, control D, that works fine, to exit the environment. And now I am back on the main system. We could see our containers by just doing toolbox list, just like that. We could see the container that we created. So to get rid of a container, that's pretty easy. We'll just do toolbox rm dash dash force. It's running, so I'm just gonna use the force option here. I'll type the container ID, but I'm, I'm lazy, so I'm just gonna type the first three characters. It just has to be enough to narrow it down. We only have one anyway. And now if I clear the screen, let's just go back to list. And we can see that we don't have any containers. So as you can see, we checked out a few of the tools that developers, engineers, you know, basically workstation users would use to do their work. We can see that the theme is clearly the professional Linux user, as I mentioned. But I did ask the question, who is this for? And unfortunately, the answer is almost nobody. Although Fedora provides a stable GNOME experience, they still lag behind all other GNOME distributions in virtually every category. When it comes to performance, Fedora does lag behind Ubuntu a bit. When it comes to polish, since Fedora does not provide a custom theme, we are left with the default GNOME theme, which does not stand on its own. And when you compare it to Pop! OS, which has a much more pleasant theme, Pop! OS just comes out looking much more professional. In fact, Ubuntu itself seems to have a more professional theme than Fedora, so when it comes to the visual appearance, it's really hard to take it seriously. When you compare the software stack, Fedora, Ubuntu, and Pop! OS, all the you know, most popular GNOME distributions right now, all ship a recent kernel as well as the latest version of GNOME. Even though Fedora 31 is a very solid GNOME desktop offering, it does many things good, 
but nothing great, and it lags behind Ubuntu and Pop! OS in virtually every category. However, there's some of you out there that really like the way that Fedora does things, and I think one of the benefits of Fedora is that even though they give you these tools, they go about it a slightly different way. So for example, you can use boxes in Ubuntu, but it's installed in Fedora by default, you're ready to go, so that's definitely a benefit. And you can also install VirtualBox in either one. So in either case, you could definitely get your work done. But the way that Fedora is structured is more aligned to the uh, Red Hat paradigm because people that work for Red Hat or are you know service providers that specialize in Red Hat, they have their own specific workload. So if you're getting into professional work that and you you know you prefer the Red Hat platform, that's going to be the platform that you support. Then honestly, there's no other answer. It should be Fedora. That should be the distribution that you go with because it is a great fit for that. I know several people that work for Red Hat and they use Fedora and they have told me that Fedora, you know, does a good job for their workload. And it seems like it does align to the Red Hat way that they do things internally. So if that's you, then, you know, Fedora is a great fit. But when it comes to, you know, the average user, like I've already mentioned, um, I, I have to say, you know, skip Fedora. I mean, it's definitely useful to check out if you're curious. You're not going to go wrong. It's just you're going to be served better by Ubuntu and Pop! OS. They both give you the latest GNOME release, the latest kernel, but they also give you better hardware uh, compatibility, which is going to be what sets them apart. The repositories have more software in them by default. And even Pharonix has found that Ubuntu outperforms Fedora 31. So, I mean, keeping all those things into consideration, and especially given that Ubuntu better caters to gamers, it's just no brainer. If you're an average user looking for a GNOME desktop, definitely go with Ubuntu or Pop! OS. But if you are more closer tied to the Red Hat platform, then uh, Fedora will probably serve you well as well. So what are your opinions of Fedora 31? Let me know in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, click that like button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe so you'll see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. If you want to help me out, there's links down below for my Patreon page, as well as links for purchasing my Linux books, and also my affiliate store, which has a listing of Linux compatible hardware that I've actually tested personally. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.